Welcome to the Gafkas, you guys. Today, I'm bringing you the latest match preview for Chelsea versus Norwich. I'm going to give you the predicted Excel, the press conference, what was said, what is Frank's reaction after the Sheffield United game, Havertz news, and N'Golo Kante's future. It's exactly what I said. Just wait and see. Last time I made a video, this happened. I wasn't very happy. It was terrible. It was pathetic. My anger really came out. For someone that aims and prides himself on trying to be positive about the team, I think that was very negative. I apologise if I offended anyone based on my stance. But we're moving on. Bigger, better things. Let's go. You guys make me want to do this. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I love reading about my club. I love the club. And I love communicating with all of you. So do me that massive favour. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. And tell me in the comments below. Do you think we're still going to make top four? I think we are. I think we need to. Let me give you the quick rundown. Rundown. We'll start with Kante. Kante news. Then we'll go into the Havertz news. Press conference from today. What did Frank say? My predictions and the predicted Excel. Like that, sorted, beautiful, let's go. Ingola Kante has been an injured wreck. All season. It's because he played in the UEFA Super Cup, apparently. He was injured, Sorry, rushed him, he played him, Kante wanted to play, the club wanted him to play, Sorry, wanted to play, we won the trophy. Happy days. But we are feeling the effects now. If you can see, Kante's injury record over here has been preposterous. Kante's injury record has been niggly injuries, left, right and centre. Our good man, Frank Lampard, wants to play a system in a 4-3-3. He wants to have two eights and a CDM. So what does this mean for N'Golo Kante? It doesn't mean good things for N'Golo Kante because we know N'Golo Kante is a hybrid midfielder. He's someone that can do all facets of the midfield role, but he doesn't do any of them exponentially great. For example, you're gonna say, what are you talking about? Kante is a great player. Well, I agree with you, but the roles that Frank wants to have in the midfield, Kante doesn't do any of them ex to an excellent standard. Let me explain. Number one, the two eights. The two eights need to be creative, they need to be athletic, and they need to be excellent in the final third because they're going to spend a lot of time in there trying to penetrate the fences that are stationary and parked up. Kante, very athletic. He's a very good player on the ball. He's good in agile situations. Give him time, he can't open up a defence. That's the issue with N'Golo Kante. He is not a Kai Havertz, he's not a Ruben Loftus-Cheek, he is not a Mason Mount, and nor is he a Ross Barkley. He doesn't have the technical abilities in the final third to open up a defence. Furthermore, if you put him at the pivot, at the defensive phase, I don't think you're getting the best out of N'Golo Kante. Very good defensive midfielder. He can tackle, he can pressure, he can put things. The only problem is his eagerness to get involved. He loves to disrupt. Why wouldn't he? He's fantastic. N'Golo Kante is fantastic at doing that. He breaks up play better than anyone. But as you can see here, apparently Chelsea are willing to listen to offers. And what do I think of this? I think the board need to be very careful. If you're going to back Lampard, then 100% you need to do this. Get him a proper defensive midfielder to sit like an Ndidi, like a Declan Rice. Somebody that's going to sit, disrupt play, break it up, let Havertz, Ruben, Mason, whoever's going to play in those positions, let them do their thing. Let this brother sit over here and do this thing. But if Frank Lampard is not 100% your man, do not risk it. Do not sell N'Golo Kante because the next manager that comes in will use N'Golo Kante. So it's up to you, Chelsea board. What are you going to do? Tell me. Mm? Mm? I know you lot are watching. Yeah. By the way, if you made it this far, hit that like button. Hit it. So, the other day, when this happened, I was very annoyed. I wake up the next morning and I see this. Why? Look, guys. Once Christian Flack reported this, I was panicking. I'm not going to lie to you. I think he's reputable as hell. He's one you trust. He's one you take his word as gospel. Because he doesn't lie. He literally is hardly ever wrong. He takes his reputation and holds it to the highest regards. So when he says something, we respect it. You've seen in my previous videos. He said stuff and it was good. It suited our agenda. We want to have us at the club. But now it's something negative. It's basically saying, if we don't get Champions League football, bye-bye Havertz. And this made me very scared. But of course, once a blue, always a blue, Dominic Solanke, I love you. What a bang up, bro. Two goals from Don Dominic Solanke and Nathan Ake. What a challenge, my brother. Fantastic. I can't wait to see Solanke back at Stamford Bridge. Hopefully one day if his career takes off. Who knows? Let's be positive. Hopefully this is a good thing to come for him. 
and hopefully Nathan Ake takes his career to the next level. Both of them, great talents. I hope they are successful, with maybe at Chelsea one day, or maybe that with us. Who knows? Who knows? But it means our top four fate is still in our hands, and it looks like we're very likely to get fourth. Other than that, guys, that's all the transfer news I wanted to give you. Time for the press conference and what did Frank say? Three main things to take away from the press conference. Number one, N'Gala Kante could be fit for the semi-final, but does not make tomorrow. As you can see over here, Frank was asked about any changes. He doesn't want to reveal his team. He does not look like a happy bunny, or did he sound like one? He is very annoyed, and I think it's very telling that after the game, he said he won't forget it. A lot of players let him down, and he had a lot of faith in them. I question why. And finally, N'Golo Kante is out the game, as I already said. Andreas Kiss Christensen was injured at halftime, but he's fully fit for the game. And Tomori, no sign of him. All right, gang. So, my prediction for tomorrow. I think we're going to absolutely pipe him. I think Norwich can't defend. Norwich aren't good in transition. And Norwich aren't a very good team full stop. Please do not come back to bite me. Do not clip me and put this on Twitter. All jokes aside, these players have something to prove right now. They're going to come out like a steamboat, like Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. If you don't know who he is, sort yourselves out, learn some wrestling. But more importantly, I genuinely think Norwich are down. They've got nothing to play for. What pride? You're down. So now they're just going to take an ass whooping. Literally, I think we're going to attack them. I genuinely think it's going to be a nice proactive performance where we're going to get a lot of goals we're going to almost make a statement but at the same time it's the wrong statement to make that's the wrong team the statement needs to happen with just three points move on to the next game they at this moment in time it's all about wins my prediction four nil four nil chelsea i think there's going to be a lot of goals everything's going to be bougie everything's going to be pretty and we're going to be perfectly fine now the lineup that i think is going to help us achieve this all right so goalkeeper I think Kepa's going to get the nod. Kepa's going to be the main man in goal. Understandable. We're going to get a good back four today. We're going to get Rhys James. He wasn't good last game and needs to improve. It's going to be a big statement. It's going to have a lot of time to cross the ball. We're going to get a back two of Andreas Christensen and Kurt Zuma. Those two are going to have to make it work for the remainder of the season. We saw what Rudiger was about and it wasn't pretty. That third goal is comical. It should go down as the biggest parody goal of the year. Left back, I think he's going to go with Aspilicueta. Like I said, he won't make a decision. For the end of the season, he's just going to go and play both Reese and he's going to play Aspi. Emerson's isolated. He doesn't trust Alonso. All right, gang. So now we're going to the midfield. The midfield, this is a tricky one. This is one that really had me worried. This is one that makes me think, what are we going to do? I think Jorginho's career at Chelsea is done. So I think we're going to go with Mateo Kovacic at the tip. I think Mason Mount is going to be on the left-hand side as always. And I personally think Ross Barkley is going to get the shout. I think Jorginho is done at Chelsea. I think Frank was very disappointed. And there was one instance in the game where Jorginho went flying. And you know what? This is my stance on it. Jorginho suits an excellent style of play in the sense where you're going to be passing the ball, moving, shifting. Former Barcelona, sorry type of ball playing, right? He doesn't suit the more aggressive, the quick-paced German style that I think Frank is trying to implement. And there's nothing wrong with that. If Frank doesn't like it and Jorginho doesn't suit it, he can't play. There's no point trying to shoehorn him in and make it work. And you're just ruining the guy's reputation and the credibility of his attributes and at the same time we won't be winning because he can't perform that role so i think it's time we sell Jorginho. tell me in the comments below if you agree or not i think right wing we're gonna get callum hudson odoi i think william will be one of the people rested slash dropped i think frankie's gonna play it off as he's being rested you know what william has played a lot of games this has been one of my criticisms why is hudson odoi not got enough minutes to the point where he's coming on rusty so i think he's gonna give him some game time tomorrow I think Capitano Pulisic, left wing, he's going to play, he's going to do his thing, weave even out, he's going he's gonna to be integral in my opinion actually. In this game, he's going to have to be super, super, super productive because they're going to park the bus and we're going to need players like him that are willing to take someone on, that are willing to create and are willing to score a goal. Someone that's willing to get in on crosses. When Reese boots it in, Pulisic is always at the back stick. I love it and it's going to be great. I can't wait to see it. Giroud is going to start. 
I'm not going to moan. I'm not going to complain because it's who I want. I don't think Tammy should start. After Tammy's performance, he does not deserve to start. I think Giroud's going to start and score and continue his good runner form. It's integral and it is what it is. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm very excited for the game. Now you lot need to do me that massive favor. Tell me in the comments below if you made it this far. I really appreciate it. I'm telling you now. If you could comment below and tell me, what do you think the score is going to be? The more, the better. Additionally, like the video, man. Subscribe to the channel. We up. We popping. I'm out. Let's go.